to the more recent stuff, um, talk us through a bit about the last year for you. So, I mean, amazing finish to uh, to, to last year with the, the World Championship uh, 8. Yep. And then um, you've been through some peaks and troughs through the winter. Not so many peaks. <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> I, I consider the Euro Champs to be a peak. I mean, I, I loved your blog. Oh, thanks. Day. That was a peak, actually. There, that was a peak. Uh, yeah, I thought that you know you were clearly in a trough at the beginning of Euro Champs. Mm -hmm. I saw you and Will in the in the Erg tent, and you guys just looked decimated, sort of mentally. But um, I think that you know, there's been that upward upward development through the weekend, or at least I took that from from your blog. Yeah, very much so. Um, so where do I start there? Uh, at the start of the season, or well, end of last season, okay, a big, a big high. So um, coming back and winning the eight uh, in Chengdu, um, that, that was amazing. Uh, first time Britain have ever done that. So something to be very proud of and um, something I think we didn't expect. So after a break from after the Olympics and coming back and building up that project, it wasn't easy. And um, the, the guys at home that followed us through that season will remember that we came fourth to uh, Germany, America and the Netherlands in Lucerne at the last World Cup before the World Championships and I think a lot of people had written us off um, and maybe that was a project a little bit too far for Jürgen but um, you know, I always had confidence after that and I knew what, where we were, what we had done and what we had to do so um, Chengdu was great and I'm very proud of that and then uh, yeah, coming back after Chengdu, back into the season, normal practice resumed for me. Uh, Nat Champs, good, a couple of um, wins there in the four and the eight, and uh, and then slowly after that, I just didn't, started not to feel myself. So now we're talking October, November, December of 2013, and um, I just couldn't get a performance at all. I mean, I was, I was doing everything, working hard, pushing my body. And um, I just, I, I didn't feel right. Uh, How did it feel? Like you had a breath for you? Um, you, with, just, with, you just couldn't get the power. Yeah, with bursts. With bursts, uh, for example, we'd typically go out and do uh, just 12 stroke bursts, you know, for a few times. And um, after four or five strokes, I just wouldn't have any power. You know, it would, normally I can just, just crank out anything and ask my body the questions and I'll have the answers but I had no answers and um, and it was it was crippling um, and when I did high-end stuff so longer than bursts I would have to reduce my pressure in the water to be able to keep up uh, and if I didn't then my breathing would get out of sync uh, I couldn't suck in enough air uh, you know sometimes it's quite scary you know when I'm wheezing over a finish line or sometimes even before you get to the finish line when your chest is locked up your throat feels like it's clamping down and I went through a lot of training camps and a lot of testing I mean, we test each other um, and get tested every week uh, through something and um, I just had nothing to show for my efforts in training uh, so December and January rolled around and training camps came uh, after a couple of months you know I know Jürgen well, We've um, the head coach has um, been my personal coach for years and um, yeah, at the start of that process he could say well maybe you've just done a bit too much, take it down before you bring it back up again, so we tried that and it didn't quite work. So then he started taking that very seriously, we brought the medics on board and then we started to go through this process of right, what, what is wrong and um, that, that was a long process, January. February, March, April, uh, I had test after test after test. You know, it was a bit frustrating going around in circles. Uh, it was never knowing what it was. Uh, it's unbelievable. You start to question your mental state. Well. Yeah, that's right. Well, when you when you have you start having tests for diabetes and glandular fever and colitis and all sorts of things that you think, you know, I haven't got diabetes. It's reassuring. Well, it, it's reassuring when you do get something back because up until then, you. It's just, is this in my head? Is it a psychological thing? And I've always prided myself on not having any psychological issues and just pushing on and, and being the tough guy. Well, that's got to be really, you've got to almost second guess yourself. I'm putting words in your mouth, but you know, you, you're somebody, it's part of the GB squad, part of 
um, you know, any rowing crew, everybody appreciates the mental toughness that you have to have to get through a race, get through an erg, and that sort of thing. It must have been a bit frustrating for you to have to think, you know, how am I going to get past this? And the, the questions, I mean, how do you, I suppose where I'm trying to go with this is the mental toughness you have to demonstrate in a race and the mental toughness to get through something like that are probably very different, but you try to relate them to each other or not? Uh, I think that's a fair enough question. So you need mental toughness to go through a race, of course, but um, this was a different kind of mental toughness. It was uh, like chronic, um, a chronic pressure of what's wrong. It's always there. You know, if you're going into training every single day and lining up against people who you know you should be beating and they're taking you to pieces every day, you want an answer and you're not getting it. And um, and as the tests come back, negative, 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 uh, in terms of results, you, you're just not getting an answer. That's that's crushing, especially through the winter, especially when um, I've been in the team for a long time. So I think everyone knows the story now. I've, I've written blogs on it and been very honest about it. You know, when I got the results back that I had a possible allergy to dogs and then it was confirmed. You know, that's uh, in one way, it's great. You know, I couldn't ever believe it was the dogs because I'd had them in my life for a long time, but I developed an allergy over time, the same actually as my father did when, when he was my age, uh, developed a dog allergy and I'd never know it at home. You know, I'd be with the dogs all the time. They'd be all over me, but um, uh, well, yeah. It's to see you back on your feet. Though. I mean, in terms of Back in, the, in, back in the process of getting to, to peak performance. Again. Well, that's right, yeah, it was, thanks. It's, um, it was a very tough time, so I just had to front up to that. Uh, I, I love those little things, but um, I, I've got to put my family in rowing first, and uh, yeah, we made some big decisions that uh, helped my physiology, and then you know, after properly cleaning our flats, then my physiology started coming back. It took maybe two weeks, and I, I really felt like there might have been a bit of a um, some training that I've missed out on. Of course, I've done everything, but if I couldn't push myself to the limit, that's maybe five months of hard training that I, I normally have had. But um, I'm a, a long trained athlete over those 10 years. Maybe I haven't missed so much. And I've found over the last five weeks that I've just come back and back and back and back. So uh, I'm, I'm happy now. I'm, I'm back to my full strength. I wouldn't say my, my very best at the moment, but um, I, I'm back to Pete Reed. you know, the, the, the athlete, the athlete that I um, have always been proud to be, and I'm, I'm not getting tired when I'm doing power strokes. I can chug away on the ergo. So um, yeah, coming up to uh, coming up to Belgrade, that was the first big test since we went through all of the the dog business, and since I've been feeling back to myself. And um, uh, on the physical side, that's one thing. I was back to myself and. I, I could contribute to the boat again, and I felt proud to be sitting in the middle. You know, five seat. You need some. You need an engine there, and I, I could deliver that. And then, uh, uh, and then onto the the technical and sort of binding side of things there as well, the mental side of things. Um, yeah, you saw us when we were out there, and it was uh, it was an outstanding progression through the weekend. Um, tell, us, tell us a bit about that. So the, the development, because I think you're a far more cohesive crew towards the end, and not only in the in the look and feel of the boat, but the way that you you all seem to click far better in the in the last race than in the earlier ones. Would you say that's fair, or yeah. talk through the development? Through that um, okay, well, just a, a tiny bit of background. I, I've already talked a lot, but um, uh, we only got selected two and a half, three weeks before uh, the regatta started. So we were a very late crew. It might have been even less than that. We didn't have much time together, and uh, we were with a bottom rank boat. So. We're missing a few guys. We, we were, it felt like we were cobbled together. And with all the credit to all the guys, um, that, was, that was also when I, I wasn't back to my full strength. So I said at the time on, on the media day, I didn't feel like I justified selection into the boat because I hadn't performed and I was still having problems. Other guys in the boat, a little bit new, not so new to the sport, but new to the team. And um, it was, an eight that was put together from lots of different places. So uh, I wrote in my blog, we came from humble beginnings and we really did. And um, I think there wasn't so much unity at the start. Technically, uh, 
there are a lot of differences on slide lengths, timings, thought processes about rowing, uh, and a lot of our sessions were quite poor to start off with, and then we would start to have a few good sessions, a few good ones, and then another couple of bad ones, and then a couple of good ones, more bad ones, and it would really be this up and down process of um, a little bit of doubt, I would say, about the rowing, uh, generally in training, and um, I'd say time ran out for us, training time ran out and all of a sudden we found ourselves in Belgrade for the European Championships and uh, we still had a, a mountain to climb but we were coming together closer as a, a, a boat. So um, over the course of the weekend now, uh, on the Friday was the heat and it was just, um, it wasn't racy, it was, there was a it felt like there was a lot of tension, a lot of doubt, a lot of people trying to do something that they weren't doing in training, you know, sitting in a seat and going, right, I'm, I'm going to do something here, I need to work on this, I need to work on that, I need to put my oar in the water. And it wasn't, we weren't thinking about the basics of rowing, simplicity, harmony, uh, rhythm, coming together, teamwork, you know, do it together, whatever it is, if you do it together, it's going to be fast. It wasn't like that, it was people doing their own things and, um, we got hammered in that heat. Uh, it was only it was only last week, and um, smashed by Poland by miles. Uh, Belarus beat us. We just beat France, I think, something like that. But you know, um, we we got together after the race. I, that's where I saw you when I was on the ergo warming down. But we went back to the hotel and sat around, and it was there was a lot of disappointment. And again, I've uh, written about this in my blog as well. Um, Um, I think that that was my t time to stand up and take a bit of charge of the boat and, and I've been in charge of a lot of boats over the last few years and doing the calls, working very closely with Andy and the pair, working very closely with TJ and, and Gregors in the four uh, for London but always doing the calls and I know it's one of my strengths to be able to remain calm, to communicate well, to feel the boat and deliver ideas to receive other people's ideas, filter them, integrate them. And uh, I'm, I'm certainly not going to take all the credit for our performance over the weekend, but it was an opportunity for me to help the guys on who are newer to the sport to give them, not give them anything, just to show them that they've already got what they need. And um, uh, Christian was very good, our coach. Um, he, he introduced a couple of very, very simple ideas and I hope what I did during that time was just say to the guys, you've got, you've got it, uh, we just need to be brave, we need to do something bigger and introduce the idea of not hanging around. You know, I can't swear on camera, but you know, just getting on with it. And um, I think the guys were then motivated, we had this simple idea, we had a plan uh, after the, the heat. The disappointment was that we were looking like it, not making the A final. Um, in, to be fair, it was a strong field, but not making the A final would have been terrible. Mm. Um, and Saturday, you know, we we were sitting on the start line like a dog pulling on a lead, waiting to go. You know, we were raring to go, hungry. We wanted to race. You know, racing to us then was a privilege, and it it wasn't the burden that it was on Friday. And um, I think that hunger really set us up well. Uh, there were little bits of doubt through the race in the heat, uh, sorry, in the semi-final, um, where the speed dropped off a bit too much. But suddenly, we're we're right in it. You know, we're right up there with Russia, and we're miles ahead of all the other crews. Okay, so good, good hunger. And then um, it was more of the same uh, leading on Saturday night, leading up to Friday. So. You know, taking it to another level, we had to be wolves, not just dogs, you know, really beasts, be brave. Um, I talked to the guys about making sure that you you use this opportunity to answer some of those very big questions about yourself, because some of the guys, maybe they've raced a lot, of course, but not lined up in a final of a European Championships. I haven't, for heaven's sake. And um, uh, I remember a similar situation eight years before where I had an opportunity to really ask myself some tough questions about how brave I am, whether or not I'm prepared to stick to a training program, go through the pain to support my crew, 
whether or not when it comes to that stroke that I need to back off, whether or not I'm going to back off or I'm going to take that stroke. And um, I think we delivered that extremely well in the final. And you can see it from our race profile. You can see it from uh, the, the, the looks on the guys' faces, the, our posture. It was, it was evident that the guys were asking themselves tough questions and, and getting the right answers as well. And you know, to, to finish third was, after Friday, was nothing short of a miracle. You know, we, we snatched that from Poland, really. It was seven hundredths that we got the bronze medal by over, over fourth. And um, to be honest with you, if it had been the other way as well, I wouldn't have minded. You know, I spoke to the guys after the race and said, whatever the result is, we've got our answers now. And then it was a bonus that we got the bronze medal. Um, I love that analogy, wolves rather than dogs. Uh, yeah. It shows, I think it perfectly captures how you guys progressed through, through those three, through those three races. Yeah, we were hungry. It was um, a really special time, you know. Uh, it, the, the importance of it for me was significant because, of course, I'm not in the top boat, of course I'm coming back. Um, but I, I had a, a wild hunger and desire for, and passion for racing that, um, that y you, can, you can miss that. If you're favourites for a race and you're expected to win and silver's a fail, then um, it's, it grinds you down. And um, being in a different situation and leading a group of good men and having the race of your lives and getting a bronze, I can really settle for that. You know, I, I, want, I want a gold medal, of course, at Rio. Um, but that bronze was amazing. Yeah, really something to be proud of. And uh, and and it wasn't it wasn't me. It was it was the group. Uh, um, it's really important that that message comes across. It was definitely the nine of us doing it together. And um, yeah, we're we're all proud of each other. And I'm sure there's more to come from that eight.